Hey there, fellow learners. Welcome back to our channel, where we explore the exciting world of higher education. In today's video, we're going to dive into the main differences between pursuing a PhD in Sweden and Switzerland. From regulations to salaries and everything in between, we've got you covered. Let's get started to understand the contrasts. Let's begin with the PhD regulations in each country. In Sweden, the PhD process is centered around independent research with some structured coursework. It typically takes about four years to complete, and the requirements may vary depending on the university. On the other hand, Switzerland follows a more structured approach with a focus on coursework and research integration. A Swiss PhD program usually lasts around three to five years, depending on the field of study. Now, let's talk about something we all care about, the financial aspects. In Sweden, PhD salaries are generally funded through grants, scholarships, or employment as a teaching or research assistant. The salary is often competitive and ensures a comfortable living. In Switzerland, PhD salaries are usually higher compared to Sweden, but it's important to note that the cost of living is also relatively higher in Switzerland. Moving on to the next aspect, supervision. Both countries emphasize strong supervision and support for PhD candidates. In Sweden, doctoral students work closely with their supervisors and have a more informal relationship, encouraging independent thinking and research. In Switzerland, supervision is typically more structured, with regular meetings and progress reports to ensure steady development. Let's explore the admission requirements now. In Sweden, admission to a PhD program generally requires a master's degree or equivalent, proficiency in English, and a well-developed research proposal. However, the specific requirements can vary across universities and disciplines. In Switzerland, the admission process may include additional assessments such as interviews or entrance exams, depending on the university and program. Now, let's discuss the cost of living. The cost of living varies between Sweden and Switzerland. In general, Sweden has a slightly lower cost of living compared to Switzerland, although it can still be relatively high in major cities. In both countries, it's important to plan your budget accordingly and explore options for financial support, such as scholarships or part-time employment. Lastly, let's look at the overall duration of a PhD program. As I mentioned earlier, a PhD program in Sweden typically takes around four years to complete. While in Switzerland, it can range from three to five years. However, it's worth noting that the duration can vary depending on the field of study, individual progress, and other factors. To sum it up, both Sweden and Switzerland offer excellent opportunities for pursuing a PhD. Sweden promotes independent research, offers competitive salaries, and has a relatively lower cost of living. Switzerland, on the other hand, emphasizes structured coursework, provides higher salaries, but comes with a higher cost of living. Remember, it's essential to consider your personal preferences, research interests, and long-term goals before making a decision. That's all for today's video, folks. I hope you found this comparison insightful and it helped you gain a clearer understanding of the differences between pursuing a PhD in Sweden and Switzerland. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Until next time, keep exploring and never stop learning.